Whether you're building an arcade or some other contraption, the go-to board for most of these projects has been the Raspberry Pi series of single board computers. Since the Raspberry Pi runs an ARM Cortex processor, you would normally run Raspbian, which is a Linux-based operating system. If you want to run Windows, you're stuck with Windows 10 IoT or Internet of Things. This can be less than desirable, because Windows 10 IoT will not run most desktop applications and can be very limited in functionality. Well now there's a single board computer running an Intel Atom processor that comes preloaded with the full copy of Windows 10. It has x86 GPIO and even includes an integrated Arduino. Let me introduce the Latte Panda. Now many of you over the years have asked me if there's a Windows based computer that you can use in my arcade projects and other projects. And the answer has always been, sure, just go ahead and build any old Windows PC and put it in your arcade. Well, unfortunately, when building a bar top arcade or some of my smaller projects, a full-size PC really isn't optimal and may not even fit. Well, the good news is the guys over at DF Robot have been listening to us, and they've come up with this single board computer that is slightly larger than a Raspberry Pi and runs a full version of Windows 10. In fact, it comes preloaded from the factory with Windows 10, and this is perfect for smaller projects like bar top arcade cabinets. So let's take a look at it. The Latte Panda comes boxed in some pretty nice packaging. As you can see, I purchased the enhanced version that has 4GB of RAM and 64GB of flash storage. There is a cheaper version that comes with 2GB of RAM and 32GB of flash if you're looking to save a little money. Besides the Latte Panda itself, you'll also find a wireless antenna in the box that can be remote mounted for better reception. Of course, you can certainly install a third party antenna if you'd prefer. Let's start the tour of the Latte Panda on the side with the USB ports. On this side, you will find an HDMI 1.4A port, a single USB 3 high-speed port, and two USB 2.0 ports. I really like this configuration because it gives you USB ports for a mouse and a keyboard, but leaves your USB 3 port open for peripherals such as external storage devices. The HDMI port is capable of 4K resolution, but only at 30 frames per second. Turning the Latte Panda counterclockwise, you'll find a reset button for the Arduino chip along with the Arduino header, which is where you would connect devices and breadboards for your projects. In addition to supporting a full Arduino, you will also find a small header which contains GPIO directly from the processor. This opens a world of options for controlling external devices. If you were using this in an arcade, for example, you could use the GPIO to activate and flash lights or to run cabinet shakers. Additionally on this side, you'll find the power and reset buttons. On the next side of the Latte Panda, you will find a 100 megabit Ethernet port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for connecting speakers or headphones, a micro SD card slot for supporting additional storage, and a micro USB connector for power input. Now the Latte Panda requires a 5 volt 2 amp input minimum. If you're going to run additional accessories, I would recommend going for a 2.5 amp supply. Most of your fast charging cell phone adapters will meet this requirement. On the last side of the Latte Panda, you will find the screen connectors for the Latte Panda's 7-inch IPS display and a connector for the touchscreen overlay. This can be fantastic for adding a small display to some Internet of Things project. Here's something interesting about the Latte Panda. They provide some of the Arduino inputs in a second form factor called plug-and-play sensor connectors. They sell an array of temperature, humidity, motion sensors, and other sensors that can be easily plugged into these connectors. They've basically idiot-proofed them for use in schools and learning environments, but it'll make it fantastic for our projects as well. Some other things to note about the Latte Panda are the inclusion of a Realtek wireless chip that offers both Bluetooth 4.0 and 802.11n for Wi-Fi connectivity. I was also quite surprised to learn that the CPU is actually located on the bottom of the device rather on the top side like in a Raspberry Pi. This causes some issues when venting the processor, which we'll see here in just a minute. The case sold by DF Robot is made from laser cut acrylic and comes on these sheets. You'll need to pop out all the pieces from the larger sheet in order to build the case. It took me quite some time to remove all the adhesive paper layers from all these components. Now I have to tell you, assembling the Latte Panda case is kind of like a Chinese puzzle. Putting one part in causes another part to fall off, but once you get everything lined up, it goes together pretty easily. I really recommend waiting until you've built the case before installing the board. This will allow you to precisely mount the CPU fan on the bottom of the case and everything will align much easier. So let's talk about a few more things surrounding the Latte Panda. So one thing that I want to mention that I find really to be a flaw with the design of this is that the processor is on the bottom 
and the fan is also on the bottom, which means that when you set the Latte Panda down on a desk or surface, the fan is almost obstructed. So if you were to set this down on anything like a towel or fabric or anything like that, maybe your leg, um, it would block the fan flow, um, the airflow from the fan. And so I really don't like that design. Now, here's the good news. If you're putting this in something like an arcade cabinet, the case is really 100% optional. There's no reason to even have it at all. Um, just put a couple of standoffs um, in your cabinet and then just mount the Latte Panda directly to that. The other thing I want to mention is if you're going to use the Latte Panda for something like an arcade, there is some really awesome software out there that you should check out. It's called RetroArc, and that is actually what um, the Raspberry Pi version, RetroPie, um, is originally based on, is RetroArc. So, um, and it can emulate all of the same uh, video game consoles and arcades that the um, RetroPie installation can emulate only all on Windows. And so I highly recommend that you go check that out. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to play a little Pac-Man on the Latte Panda.